My name's Nick. I started Nick's TV Repair 10 years ago, and since then we have fixed over 25,000 devices. In this video, I'm gonna show you how we fix the power supply for a Vizio model number M70-C3. The customer sent in both the power supply and their main board, which actually both tend to fail in this specific unit. We're gonna be performing preventative repairs to the main board, but right now we're gonna focus on the power supply and more specifically, bulge capacitors. There are two common symptoms that this repair will resolve for this power supply. The first one is that the TV will turn on, but only after you power it on and off several times or unplug power and plug it back in several times, and eventually you will get picture. Now, if the power supply is in worse condition, and no matter how many times you unplug it, plug it back in, turn it off and back on, you still don't get picture, but you do at least get the standby light, this will also resolve that issue. It's just a more severe version of that first fault. This is the power supply as we see it in the TV, and we're just gonna switch the orientation real quick, and we're gonna pay specific attention to the capacitors over here, starting with these four right here. If I tilt the board like this, and we zoom in, you will notice that all four of these here are bulging. So they are rounded out at the tip of the capacitor. Now compared to these guys over here, they are nice and flat. This is a visual indication that these capacitors are bad. So what we're gonna do is remove them out of circuit and we're gonna check them with our capacitance meter just to confirm. They are attached to the board with some silicone. So I'm gonna use this tool to pry them up. Okay, now that these are loose off of the board, we can go ahead and desolder them from the back. All right, and the two legs are gonna be right here. So I'm gonna start by adding some solder to both legs. And then we're gonna try and melt both sides at the same time while I'm wiggling it out. And here we are, our first one's freed. We're gonna shift over and do our next one. Same thing, add a little solder first. There we go, that's our second one. Third one over here. Now these first three are the ones that were visually looking okay. So we're gonna put those to the side. Now we're gonna shift over to this row over here, and this entire row is the, or are the four that we're bulging. So what we'll do here is, we're just gonna go ahead and start adding solder to all four capacitor legs, or all eight, I guess. And then we'll go back and remove them one by one. Okay, first one. Yep. Second one. Third one. And fourth one. Here I'm holding two good ones on the left and two bad ones on the right. Another visual clue is this one over here has a little browning at the top. That is actual electrolytic fluid that's oozing out of the top. That's another visual indicator. But I just wanna show you the difference between these. Let's get an angle, so nice and flat, nice and flat, round it out, round it out. Now it is less common, but sometimes we also do see some of that electrolytic fluid oozing out of the backside where the legs are. On these, we're not seeing that, but that is something worth checking. Okay, now let's do a check with our ESR meter. This one is one of the good ones. And it's a little hard to show you on screen, but it's showing 994 microfarads with 0.08 ohms ESR. Now, if we compare to one of our bad ones here, It is just stating in circuit slash leaky ESR equal 1.58 ohms. So it's detecting that this one is defective. Now we're gonna test the one with the electrolytic fluid that was oozing out of it. Let's see what that one says. 
So that one is not saying leaky, but it does show 226 microfarads and 2.2 ohms for the ESR. Again, these are 1000 microfarads, so it's showing 226. So it's not saying it's leaky, but it's definitely completely out of tolerance. And this is also a defective one. And this one thinks that it's either in circuit or leaky, 1.52 ohms for the ESR. Let's check this good one as the last one just to get another baseline. And we're getting 998.4 microfarads, 0 0.08 ohms for the ESR. So again, this is one of the ones that was not bulging. And that does kind of confirm to me that visually, if you see it bulging, you can more or less be guaranteed that it's bad. And if it's flat, it's probably okay. Uh, at least for these newer power supplies specifically. Now, because we do see all of them fail eventually, we are gonna replace all seven and we're gonna use our Hako FR-301 desolder pump for this. And we're gonna try and do it in a way that you can still see what I'm doing here. We've removed all of the solder that was on our joints. We can go ahead and flip the board over. And before we go ahead and insert our new replacement capacitors, I'm just gonna remove some of that extra silicone left behind. And we don't need to remove 100% of it, but I just wanna have more or less a flat surface to put our replacement capacitors. All right, so next we're gonna go ahead and feed our components through. Our replacement capacitors are labeled with a negative. On the board, we have a black bar on the negative side, so that's how we know how to line it up. There's also a negative sign and a positive sign next to the holes for the leads. Okay, we're just gonna feed it through, bend it over. And on the back side, I'm gonna go ahead and bend the pins out like that. And we're gonna do that six more times. Next, we're gonna solder these in. Now, if you're interested in doing this repair yourself, we will have the kit available for sale on our website, and that will be linked in the video description down below, as well as if you do not want to try and fix it yourself and would rather send it in for us to fix, you can also send in your power supply and we can do this repair for you. We'll have a link to our flat rate service also in the description down below. Okay, and we'll do the rest of these off screen. All right, now we can go ahead and line these up since they are now locked in. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push them back ever so slightly. And that's gonna help make sure that they stay in the same spot and that they are positioned exactly how we want them. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this 470 microfarad 50 volt capacitor, as well as the three over here. So for these, because I'm not gonna be testing them, we're just gonna use our pliers. I don't really care about damaging them. All right, same thing with these. We're gonna start by adding some new solder, and then we're gonna wiggle the capacitor out from the back. Here we go, that's our first one. And then we have the next three all right next to each other here. And there's our first, second, and third capacitor. So that's all four. Now these will probably test okay if I use the ESR meter. So we're not gonna do a live check with those, uh, but we are still replacing them because we do sometimes see them go bad. So this is what we call a preventative repair. They may not have failed yet, but because the others have failed, it's an indication that these are probably near their end of life and should be replaced. If we don't, this power supply may become defective in the next six months. So might as well replace all of the capacitors that can and do sometimes go bad. Now we're gonna go ahead and desolder.
Okay, same thing. We're gonna do a little bit of bore prep. We're gonna remove just a little bit of that silicone, just the big stuff. Same as before, these capacitors also have a negative side indicating the negative lead and same as the board. We have that black bar on the right side indicating it's negative and also it's labeled at the bottom. Oh, and you see, I just got it the wrong way. All right, that's better. All right, so final adjustment. We're gonna push these down and towards the legs, down, towards the legs, down, towards the legs. And now they're more or less locked in. Oh, this one as well. They're nice and flush against the board. And we're all set. This does complete our repairs. If you're interested in sending this power supply for us to fix, we'll have links in the video description below. If you wanna fix it yourself, we'll also have that kit with the capacitors available for sale on our website, also linked in the description down below. If you're interested in checking out how we fix the main board, you can check out this video next. Otherwise, if you found the content helpful or useful, make sure to leave us a like, subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.